These are the books you need to check out if you're interested in learning more biology this summer. Are you a high school biology student or a rising AP bio student, or maybe even you're a prospective college bio major? Are you looking to build your summer reading list? I'm gonna cover some of my favorite biology related books that will enhance your summer reading TBR list and give you a mental boost this summer. Although most of these are pretty non-technical, I meaning they're meant for regular readers, consumers, or the public, doing more of any type of reading will increase your reading speed and reading comprehension, which will help you down the road in your biology classes and maybe even your career. Reading was definitely a passion of mine from an early age, and the books I read during summer and during my high school career definitely had an influence on my major and career choices. As I go through this list, I'll tell you when the book came out, some of them are a little bit old, so take that into consideration when you're reading and remind yourself that science changes, research improves, and we learn new things every single year. That's not to say that any of these books are out of date, but they may not have the most up-to-date understanding of particular topics. Always a good idea once you read a nonfiction book in the sciences to go and see what advancements have been made since the date of publication in the field that it's about. All these are definitely accessible for high school readers, but it's up to you to make the decision on whether a book is a right choice for you based on your interests and your reading abilities. Let's get started. Let's start with this one I have in my hand. This is Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. Uh, this is about a little over 200 pages without the notes in the back on the paperback version. It was published recently, so 2020, and it is a fascinating deep dive into the world of fungi. It really is truly mind bending. Once you learn more about fungi, it really changes the way you think about biology and life itself. I would say the beginning starts off a little bit slow. It's fascinating, maybe for scientists, but the more you get into it, the more fascinating things you'll learn. It doesn't keep you on the edge of your seat like some of the other books I'll have in this list, but it is one of those books that may change the way you think about the world. The 2016 book Lab Girl is a memoir. It's a book by a geobiologist, uh, Hope Jarin. It's a memoir about her life as a scientist. I think it's really important for students and anybody really to understand what goes on in the lab and what doing science actually looks like. I think this book creates a really good picture of that and especially how women experience life as scientists these days. It's really well written and I've had people tell me it's one of their favorite books they've ever read. Next up from 2010 and this book might be assigned to you for your biology or AP biology class or even college reading because it's so popular but The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Now without explaining too much about the book, if you've never heard of HeLa cells, they are part of an immortal cell line that were taken from a woman with cancer, Henrietta Lacks, at Johns Hopkins University where she was a patient being treated and they were taken without her consent. These cells went on to be sold, they became very profitable, and there are countless scientific discoveries that have been made because of these cells. The book explores the story of her, her family, and the author's interactions with the family. It is another book that's sort of memoir-ish, and the author does insert herself a little bit into the story, so if that bothers you, I would just warn you ahead of time that you get to know the author as well as the subjects of the book. It definitely brings in lots of ethical questions about science and scientific discovery. It helps you get to know this person who was really erased from from science and scientific discoveries for a very long time. And it's wonderful that, that this book has become so popular and brought to light this story and the story of her family. I would definitely recommend adding it to your summer reading list if you don't have to already read it for school. Next up, we have 2007's Better by Atul Gawande. If you're somebody who's interested in medicine or the medical field one day, this could be a really inspiring book for you. He's written a lot of books. This is one of my favorites of his, where he talks about his experiences as a surgeon and talks about improvements that have been made in healthcare and how small Small scale improvements can make big changes over time. He relates this back to individuals' lives, and it's really inspiring, even if you're not interested in becoming a doctor one day. It's a really well written book that's easy to process and can be really exciting for anybody. Speaking of exciting, uh, 1994's The Hot Zone by Richard Preston is still one of my all time favorite nonfiction science books. It is written like a medical thriller, so it is fast paced, it is serious, and the stakes are really high because it's about potentially Ebola getting out in the United States from a lab. And it was definitely one of the books that, that really captured my attention as a young reader and got me super fascinated in biology and science. Another one that I remember loving reading way back in the day, this is 20 years old now, but Stiff by Mary Roach, published in 2003, is about dead bodies and what happens to them after people die. Uh, it's all about the science of cadavers, so whether or not you donate your body to science or the process of decomposition of bodies and how science has progressed and are thinking about dead bodies over time. And if you don't have a weak stomach, this one is really fascinating. I would say anything by Mary Roach is humorous and thought provoking. Gulp is another one of my favorites of hers. So I would re really recommend checking out any of her books if you're interested in maybe a little bit of the gross end of science and biology. Yuck. If you're somebody who is into speculative biology or aliens even, 2013's 
The Zoologist's Guide to the Galaxy might be a great summer reading pick for you. This book starts off with some really great grounded explanations of evolution and natural selection and what we could expect life to look like on other planets in conditions based on what we know about evolution here on Earth. Since it is grounded in biology, I think it does a great job of harnessing the imagination and what we do know about science and natural selection, which makes it a pretty fun imaginative read. If you're more interested in things that are happening here on Earth, The Sixth Extinction is a great read. I think this is from 2014, but as time has gone on, a lot more people have tended to agree with some of the conclusions and ideas that this book contains. This is the idea that there were five major mass extinctions within Earth's history, but now we are experiencing a sixth one based on the current rates of extinction that are going on across many different phyla of life on Earth. It's pretty dark, and there are some things that have happened since this book has come out that make the situation even seem even more dire. Arguments are well laid out, and it is a great read for anybody interested in e ecology or environmental science. And speaking of ecology and environmental science, 2020's Pests by Bethany Brookshire is a really interesting Book. It takes a fascinating perspective on some of the animals and organisms we consider pests, uh, especially invasive species, which have long been anthropomorphized and villainized by humans in a lot of different contexts. So this could be a really interesting read for anybody interested in environmental science or again ecology. If you're more into the zoology side of things or you're interested in ethology, which is the study of animal behavior, you can't go wrong with any of Jane Goodall's books. My Life with the Chimpanzees is a great place to start. It is a quick, easy read, lots of really great animals anecdotes from her time as a young girl all the way up through her studies in Gombe National Park, observing chimpanzees firsthand. And it's a truly inspiring tale that I think holds up today and is a really wonderful read for anybody interested in science and animals. You want something a little bit scarier? 2011's Rabbit is a really fascinating look about rabies and the virus itself and the history of it. There's a lot that I did not know about rabies before reading this book, and it truly is like a zombie virus which makes it all the more scary. <laughs> if you were somebody who's into psychology, you can't go wrong with the classic 1985's The Man Who Most Took His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. This world-renowned psychologist and neurologist Oliver Sacks and takes a bunch of case studies of people with fascinating neurological conditions and talks about their stories. Again, a lot has progressed since 1985 in our understanding of the brain, but this is a great place to start, especially if you're just getting into learning about psychology and neuroscience. If you're somebody interested in sports, David Epstein's The Sports Gene came out in 2013. It's a great look about science and athletic performance and how these things are related and how so much of our own abilities and health are related to genetics. This is a nuanced take on a lot of things that people have hot takes on or really simple explanations for. If you're interested in fitness and health and sports, definitely would be great to read this book to get a little bit more background knowledge about how athletes perform the way they do. 2012's The Walkable City by Jeff Speck is another one that really changed the way that I see the world around me. If you're interested in environmental science and urban design, this one is really fascinating. It makes an argument for making cities more walkable or pedestrian friendly. This one is probably the furthest away from biology out of all the books in this list. It really is fascinating and helps you pay better attention to how cities and roads are designed for cars rather than for people and how that has effects on our health and our environment and safety. Finally, I'll end today with 2015's The Soul of an Octopus, which is just a wonderful read about the intelligence and emotions of octopuses, as written by Cy Montgomery. Another great one for you animal behavior enthusiasts out there and anyone interested in ocean life and the mysteries that we are still trying to uncover about things here on Earth. So today I just covered nonfiction and memoirs, but there are a lot of fiction books that actually have a lot of biology involved and can be great for biology students to read. What other science books are you reading this summer to enhance your knowledge and make you better prepared for your biology classes? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.